Here's a look at the cabinet after a bit of cleaning. I used some auto products, some Scratch X and McGuire's Cleaner Wax. Since baseball, this is painted metal just like a car, so why not? So we've got all the white specks off of it. And other than a few little chips right here, it's in really, really nice condition. I also drilled out the remains of the rivets down below and installed some nice rubber feet so it's no longer just sitting on the ground. So a little bit of work left to do on the chassis. Then I'll pop it back in here and reinstall the tuner, hook everything back up, and uh, hopefully it will be done. Now there is one more cap that should be replaced, and potentially a resistor. And not so easy to get at, not so easy to see, and I bet a lot of restorers have overlooked them. Down in here, you can see the resistor, it's 470K and there's a cap way back there. We can see better from the top side if I move this cardboard aside. There it is. And what is it attached to? Well, one side is going right to the AC interlock. Here they are on the schematic. So that should be replaced with a safety cap, the Y type, which is for going for one side of the AC line to ground, or take it out completely. And that resistor should, uh, well, I would recommend replacing it with a high quality metal oxide flame proof type or metal film uh, and oversize the wattage. So, why are they there? Well, this predates modern convention of using a three-prong plug like this where the third prong would be ground. If it did have a three-prong plug you could attach the chassis ground, there's metal here, to that third that third prong. Or if it was polarized you could have the neutral go to the chassis. But this is not polarized and it's not grounded so if you don't do either of those the chassis is just well floating. And uh, if you don't attach it to either of these in, in, any, in any way, a charge could build up on it uh, and it could be kind of floating potential. So this provides at least a high impedance path between the chassis and one side of the AC line. And similarly this will uh, provide a path for AC. Um, I was really concerned about safety. I could replace that with a polarized plug and have the neutral go down to this side because in case this ever shorts out or this ever shorts out so in case of the resistor failing if this side was neutral it uh, wouldn't be a problem but uh, if this one shorts out well that being the hot side that'd be a problem so if you're going to replace it use a safety cap of Y type they are designed to fail open never short out or I said take it out, take it out entirely if you don't have one on hand you do not want that to fail. Oh, so why not uh, install a modern three-wire AC line cord and ground the chassis? Um, I think you could. I think you could. I know the topic's come up on the Antique Radio Forum, uh, more relating to radio chassis, uh, but I tend to go with the more conservative approach which is uh, if it ain't broke don't fix it. Uh, these two wire type appliances have been around for many decades and uh, they seem to work alright. You don't hear a whole lot about uh, people getting shocked or anything so I tend to uh, think uh, I should just uh, leave well enough alone and I'll just replace that cap and resistor with a reliable modern component. All right, I finally finished with the recapping, and just as I'm surprised that there was perfect spots on the main board for these three electrolytics, there's perfect spots in the terminal strips for the rest. So, two main ones are on the voltage doubler power supply here, and the others right here on this terminal strip. So I didn't have to do anything, no restuffing of electrolytics, no mounting of uh, terminal strips, nothing. All I had to do was. Uh, Put a little heat shrink tubing over the wires that used to run to the cap that was mounted here. Uh, so, uh, there's one last thing to do is to make sure it's still working and then put it all back together.
curious, last time I had this running, the uh, width was full width and the height was less. I suspect as the set warms up, the width is going to fill out and the height is going to start coming down a little. To adjust the height and width, there are controls on the back here. Width is right here. And there's height and linearity and linearity and height interact with each other to some extent so let's see I'll tweak those a little bit even though it was adjusted well as I said a while ago in fact uh, here I'll vary the voltage and the variac a little and you see the width and the height a change so there I went down a little with the voltage here I'm going up there's no voltage regulation in these old sets, so when your AC line voltage varies, you have to make little adjustments to the set. So like you can get this working perfectly in the shop and then take it over to the customer's place and the set won't be working right anymore. Or you'll have to make adjustments to the height and width and linearity. Alright, so no problem getting the width. And a little too much height. That down a little. All right, so I'm gonna start putting this thing back to back in the cabinets while paying attention to the lead dressing. And by that I mean some of the wires should be going through these bits of metal here and wrapped around, so uh, you minimize the noise pickup or potentially any wires shorting into anything. Alright, I finally got the set all back together. Use Novus on the screen and some car wax on the cabinet. And I went through the test pan generator just to linearity and I'm pretty happy with the results. So here is a Final look at it playing, and the owner I think will be coming up to uh, coming over to pick it up tomorrow. Really happy with the sets, playing quite well. So that's going to be it for this set. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this look at restoring a predicted debutante. And now uh, I'm going to wrap up the princess, which is uh, also close to being done.